This video is brought to you by me. For $1 a month, you can support the channel directly and help me keep doing what I love. Thanks for watching and supporting. Fly. Like a butterfly. Fly. Like a butterfly. Four years ago, I started this channel because I didn't think Jet Set Radio Future got enough love. It was a game that shaped my childhood and interests as it introduced me to new genres of music I wouldn't have heard otherwise, and created this love of street art and graffiti. To this day, one of my favorite things has been reading through the comments of that video and seeing people share their stories with the game, creating this itty bitty spot on the internet where some of us can geek out over it, sharing our wish list for what a third game in the series would look like. But in that time, the Jet Set Radio community hasn't had much to celebrate. Instead of the remake that seemingly is always around the corner but never comes, the creator of Jet Set Radio Live, a site that I praise in my video, has revealed himself to be an anti-vaxxer conspiracy theorist who shares porn on the supposedly family-friendly site. When it felt like all hope was lost, a gift from the heavens descended upon us. A game called Bomb Rush Cyberfunk was teased in 2020. It looked familiar but new at the same time. A track by the Jet Set Radio composer Hideki Naganuma was playing in the background as skaters flew across the screen, spraying their paint all over the city. Team Reptile, best known for their Lethal League games, were behind the project, and it would be coming out, well, whenever it was done, thus beginning an excruciating three-year wait for the game to finally release. But now, it's finally here, and I tore through it over the release weekend. Was it worth the wait? I woke up at 8am on release day, chomping at the bit to play, only to realize that it didn't come out until 9am. But after downloading the respectable 10GB file to the Steam Deck, and saying a quick prayer to the Linux gods that Proton didn't let me down, I was thrown into the cell-shaded glory of New Amsterdam. Immediately, I felt like I was home. As if I lived in an alternate timeline where Sega gave a shit about Jet Set Radio. The sights, the iconic art style that made minimalist, flat graphics cool, and the sounds, the techno and hip-hop that changed my interest in music, were both here. As you can probably tell, Bomb Rush Cyberfunk makes no attempt to hide its inspiration. It is absolutely a love letter to a series that's last entry is old enough to drink in America. It lifts so many of Jet Set Radio's defining features from both of the original games, threading the needle between what made each game unique. But to make comparisons easier, I'm going to call the first game Jet Grind Radio and the second game Jet Set Radio Future or some variation of that. BRC is all about taking over New Amsterdam by covering turf and spray paint and evading a corrupt police department. After getting his head cut off, yes I said that right, Red is created from the body of his former self named Foe and a new cyber head recycled from a junkyard. He's on a mission to recover his noggin from DJ Cyber, the leader of the largest gang in the city called Futurism. DJ Cyber collects heads he chops off with his steel records, obviously. Try to keep up. After teaming up with the Bomb Rush crew, Red is given an ultimatum. If the team can go all city and rule the entirety of New Amsterdam, DJ Cyber will return Foe's head and restore Red to his former self. Your team begins with Red, the leader of the Bomb Rush crew Trice, and Bell, a character who introduces Red to the idea of a cell phone. As you play the game, you impress characters and convince them to join your crew to expand the roster. The designs are very cool and they look like they are ripped straight out of Jet Set Radio's universe while still retaining their own style. However, more polarizing is that there aren't any stats associated with the characters. It makes it easy to pick your favorite character design to use, but it also means that there isn't a character you are dying to get with better stats. Naturally, going all city isn't going to be easy for Bomb Rush. The city is broken up into multiple districts with a different crew running each location. The Franks run the first area, and they are a crew of taggers who are assembled from bits and pieces of people who have been shed from their mortal coil. These are the funniest characters in the game because some of their dialogue is so dry and out of left field. Like when the cops come and crash your party, they say, Looks like the fun police are here, aka the police. Or when you go head to head against them, one of the members says you'll never defeat him because his right leg is from the highest jumper in Puerto Rico. Their leader, the Flesh Prince, is responsible for saving and creating Red, and presumably responsible for literally building his crew from salvaged body parts. 
Next up is Eclipse, the gang of all women who rule over Millennium Square. They won't even talk to you if you're a guy, so you have to approach them with a different member of your group. .exe are a team of robots whose helmets are all different billiard ball numbers, and the mall is their turf. They are deeply connected and know a lot, almost too much, about what is going on in the police department. Devil Theory is more or less the poison jam of BRC. They have one of the coolest territories in the game. You literally take a ferry there, and it's a pyramid-shaped shipping platform with pipes everywhere, and it's fun to scale. To make matters worse, the police have a vendetta against graffiti taggers. If they are allowed to vandalize the streets, it sends the message that the rule of law isn't something that needs to be taken seriously. As your reputation for taking over turf goes up, the cops send more and more lethal force after you, despite lower members of the police squad saying they aren't armed or dangerous, and most of the time they're just defending themselves. Like in Jet Grind Radio, the police show up in phases as you spray more and more paint around the level you are in. BRC has a heat system that starts with foot soldiers coming after you that escalates as far as drones descending and shooting at you. You can fight back by using a melee system, something that took me way too long to figure out after using spray paint to incapacitate opponents for the last 20 years. You can also zero out your heat system by switching outfits at a porta potty. At the end of each level, there is a boss fight against a mech or a major member of the police force, and my only complaint is that I wanted even more of them by the time they were done. Not a bad problem to have. But more than anything, skating is a means of platforming through levels to get to the tagging locations, a tool to get you to where you want to go. Just as the games before, the skates lock onto rails you approach automatically, so you don't have to worry about a grind button. But where BRC changes things up is adding three new methods of travel, free running, BMX, and skateboarding. This was an excellent evolution to the series, and it changes things up considerably. If you get tired of one form of travel, switch to another. However, from what I experienced, each form has its own pros and cons. Free running gives you pinpoint control over your character, but on the flip side, lack of momentum prevents you from jumping as far. Skating gives you more speed, but your character is more slippery. Skateboarding allows you to extend combos with manuals and extend your manual time with tricks, but it also means wider and less precise turns compared to skates. I had a lot of fun with BMX, but I didn't find a ton of downside to using it. I think it had the same turn radius as skateboarding, but the sheer size of the bike made attaching to rails much easier than anything else. It seemed like a wider hitbox. But not only is riding around a means of transportation, there is an added emphasis on tricks and combos. Instead of taggers tag, you compete in crew-based trick battles. The competition is overseen by the old heads, the group of skaters who ran the streets before the whippersnappers of today started taking over. These characters are like the elder gods of New Amsterdam, responsible for enforcing the code of the streets. The system of pulling off tricks is far more complex in this game, while still being quite approachable to newcomers. Besides the jump button, the other face buttons are assigned to trick buttons, so as you fly through the air, pressing one of the other three buttons does a trick. You can string them together by pressing another button as the trick before it ends, and you can rack up more points. You can also do special tricks by holding the boost button and pressing trick buttons to get thousands of points at once. You can replenish your boost with orbs you pick up or by doing combos, so keeping boost flowing is the key to success. But there are also multiple ways to increase your trick multiplier. You can lean into corners on rails to get a boost, you can wall ride on billboards, and you can combo on quarter pipes and manual between them. The trick system feels similar to the old way, but it is now much more fleshed out and fun to use. And because trick multipliers matter during the combo challenges, exploring the areas as you discover them to find the best lines is worthwhile. But of course, more than anything, the style of Bomb Rush Cyberfunk comes down to graffiti and the art you are spreading around the city. Bomb Rush revives the gesture-based tagging mechanic from Jet Grind Radio, but still manages to add its own flair. Instead of one set of gestures assigned to a tag depending on the size of the canvas, you direct the cursor in different angles to spray different designs, which I love. Limiting the different sizes to one piece in the previous games always felt like a missed opportunity because one of the collectibles were the graffiti souls that unlocked new designs. Now you can spray as many different designs as you want, and I found myself memorizing the gestures of my favorite pieces. As for the levels, I like them all, but I don't love them. It is so apparent that a lot of these levels are remixes and mashups of classic districts from the Jet Set Radio series. They are large and interconnected, and it was always cool to find a new path that opened the district even more. But sometimes, I felt like the levels were a bit too flat. 
There might be one spray paint location that is high up on a building, but you aren't ascending very often compared to Grind City or Rakaku Dai Heights or the sewage facility to name a few off the top of my head. It was incredibly refreshing though to have staircases wide enough that I didn't get stuck grinding between the sides when I just wanted to get on the floor and walk. It's a give and take. Like I said, I like them all, but I wish there was a bit more variety. My favorite levels ended up becoming the linear dreamscape sequences that would start when Red Cyberhead malfunctioned, sending him into trippy memories of places he has already been. These become obstacle courses where you have to platform your way to the end in order to tag a certain landmark and unlock a memory from Red's past. I think BRC could have used some environmental storytelling that explained why the crews are rebelling. In Jet Set Radio Future, there were areas where people were living on top of each other, in these densely populated areas that became labyrinthian and dystopian. The fortified residential zone is a place of nightmares. Is that a nitpick? Probably. But I also think the atmosphere suffers because of a few small but important issues I have. For instance, there is no voice acting in major cutscenes, which takes away from major character reveals or twists, and the introduction of modern technology like a smartphone means there is no radio station that everyone on the streets is listening to. Listening to the songs you have collected on shuffle is less deliberate than the idea that everyone on the streets was listening to Jet Set Radio and listening to DJ Professor K spilling the beans about what was happening behind closed doors and creating a record of what was happening on the streets. The radio station unified the gangs against the powers running the city and warned them of the authorities closing in. So while everyone was competing for turf, they were still listening to the same thing. It was a key to their survival, and the driving music that powered the skaters kept them moving fast. In that sense, Bomb Rush slightly misses the mark. Naturally, radio was a much bigger deal in 2002, and smartphones didn't exist. Updating it for today makes underground pirate broadcasts obsolete when anyone can upload a podcast to the internet. But the lack of a station de-emphasizes the importance of the music and the us vs them themes that came with it. So Bomb Rush Cyberfunk is finally out, and let me say how I feel about it like this. I have waited 21 years now for a sequel to Jet Set Radio Future that has never arrived, and for all I know, never will. But if Bomb Rush Cyberfunk picks up the mantle and branches off into its own series, continues to build on the foundation it has created with this first game, and keeps adding new quality of life features and new ideas, that would be enough for me. Team Reptile has done an outstanding job capturing what made Jet Set Radio so beloved in the first place without feeling like a derivative knockoff. Instead, it grabs the best of what came before it and creates its own spin on the formula. In spite of the nitpicks I have about the atmosphere, I think this is a must-play game for fans of Jet Set Radio. The three years it took were absolutely worth the wait, and I cannot wait to see what Team Reptile does next with this series. So how long have you been waiting for a sequel to Jet Set Radio? Did you pick up Bomb Rush and give it a try? Let me know what you think of it down in the comments. I would love to know what other fans think about it. And if you want more videos like this, subscribe and hit the bell for notifications when I upload. And if you want to help me fund my own pirate radio station broadcast, check out my Patreon in the description. I'd like to thank my patrons, Just Jessica, Kaylee, Andrews, Elmore, and Donahoe, BBF and Bloxburg, Kudo716, Ted Z, Benjamin, and H. Roger. See you on the streets.